Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to today's uh, press conference. I'll hand over immediately to uh, Jim O'Bartles. Thank you very much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good evening and uh, welcome to the NATO Military Committee Conference 2013 press conference. This is a unique opportunity for NATO's Chief of Defense to gather outside Brussels to discuss key security issues concerning the alliance. And I'm grateful to General Banco and Hungary for hosting this meeting. Let me use this opportunity on behalf of the alliance to express the value we attach to your country's strong support. I will now highlight the key points of our discussions. First, we reach a common understanding of the security situation in the Middle East and North Africa, including Syria. As you know, last year NATO decided to augment Turkey's air defense capabilities in order to defend the population and territory of Turkey and contribute to the de-escalation of the crisis along the alliance border. We agreed to do so within the framework of the NATO integrated air defense system and in accordance with the NATO standing defense plan. We will continue to monitor the situation closely because our ultimate task is the protection and defense of our members. In the following session, we reviewed NATO's current operations, starting with Afghanistan. We agreed with Kam Isaf's uh, positive assessment of the Afghan National Security Forces capabilities. For the first time, the Afghan forces are in the lead for security throughout the country. They are planning and conducting complex operations across the whole country. This is a major challenge, and they are rising to this challenge every day. NATO Chiefs of Defense expressed their commitment to support, to continue to support the Afghan forces once ISAF operation is over by training, advising, and assisting them to build on the progress we have made so far together. A number of decisions related to resolute support are still outstanding, but we made further progress towards finalizing our military advising advice. In the K4 session, NATO Chief of Defense discussed the progress made in terms of security and stability. We have seen progress in the ability of the local institutions to take responsibility for law and order, but there is still work to do, and K4 will continue to stay vigilant and ensure a safe and secure environment for all people there. Our intention is to gradually reduce the size of K4 when conditions allow. Any further decision will be taken based on real improvements on the ground. In our session dedicated to NATO transformation, Chiefs of Defense were updated on the positive development in smart defense, the Connected Forces Initiative, and the future exercise program in preparation for the next defense ministerial's meeting. The Smart Defense Initiative reflects Alliance solidarity, building upon multinational approaches and innovative solutions to capability delivery and sustainment. NATO Chief of Defense acknowledged the first concrete deliverables from this initiative and expressed their commitment to support efforts to develop multinational projects promoting a new mindset and help building a long-term commitment. NATO Chief of Defense also provided their guidance to the Supreme Allied Commander Transformation, General Jean-Paul Palomeros, for further work on implementing the Connected Forces Initiative. Also related to transformation, we gave our strong support to exercise Trident Juncture, a large-scale exercise to be conducted in 2015 which will mark NATO's shift of focus from operations to operational readiness. This exercise represents an invaluable opportunity to test NATO command and force structures with the NATO response force at the heart of the exercise. In looking to the future, NATO chiefs of defense were clear that the upcoming exercise program should support and demonstrate both the capability and the relevance of the Alliance. In our last session, we discussed the ongoing internal review of NATO's military structure with specific focus 
on the international military staff of NATO headquarters. Finally, I would like to announce that Lithuania has offered to host the next military committee conference, which will take place in September 2014 in Vilnius. So my special thanks go to Lithuania for its support to the military committee and to this alliance. In conclusion, it has been a very successful meeting and we look forward to present the fruits of our discussions to the NATO defense ministers next month. With this, I will now pass the floor to General Benko, but let me use once again this opportunity to express my thanks to him, Thank you, General, and for Hungary for hosting us during this meeting. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, ladies and gentlemen, may I welcome all of you uh, and uh, thank you very much for having come here. Thank you very much for coming here and thank you very much for the interest shown. For the interest shown. Uh, I would like to thanks, uh, thank uh, General Bartas for uh, the uh, for his kind words of recognition, because Hungary, as uh, the host of this conference, I think, has uh, passed the test, at, at least uh, up until now we've passed the test, because the work is not yet over. Colonel General, uh, the chairman of the military committee, uh, mentioned the topics that have been tabled uh, in the course of the conference, of our current conference, and I have to say that Hungary, the Hungarian Defense Forces, have uh, has been uh, have be, has been um, actually part uh, of all of these topics. So we've been uh, um, involved in all of the topics mentioned by uh, the chairman, by the colonel general, uh, and I think no need to mention that Afghanistan is of extreme importance, of special importance for us because our servicemen have been uh, uh, serving in Afghanistan for ten years now. Uh, it was uh, last spring that we uh, b commenced our drawdown. Uh, from from Afghanistan, the PRT uh, finished and completed its work uh, after six years, and uh, uh, this year uh, we are also going to uh, draw down uh, our unit, uh, which is uh, responsible for the force protection of Kaya Kabul International Airport. Uh, there is a full understanding about the fact that uh, the security forces in Afghanistan need further help and assistance, and Hungary uh, will have to take her part uh, uh, in this activity and this endeavor. The other major topic was the Balkans. Uh, minister, our Minister of Defense mentioned uh, this morning uh, in the course of uh, his introductory, his keynote speech that um, as a result of the drawdown in Afghanistan, we will have the opportunity to contribute more uh, in uh, this uh, region very important to us, that is to reinvest our forces, uh, part of our forces uh, being drawn down from Afghanistan uh, to the Balkans. The next topic also mentioned by the chairman was uh, uh, NATO reform, the reform of the alliance, uh, the restructuring. There are over 160 officers and NCOs uh, working uh, in different uh, NATO commands, working in different NATO commands uh, for periods of three to four years. So it is uh, extremely important for us that at these commands, Hungary uh, would have the necessary representation, the right, the appropriate representation, especially in order to um, gather and accumulate all the experience and expertise that come together with uh, serving in NATO positions at NATO headquarters, at NATO commands. Uh, the chairman and also our minister mentioned uh, that the so-called smart defense uh, is of uh, uh, is of essence, is of key importance. One of the key elements uh, thereof is that uh, in the current economic situation, uh, with our scarce resources, uh, 
taking into account our resources, our opportunities, uh, we uh, provide for a more efficient cooperation. A very good example to uh, smart defense in Hungary is the uh, Papa Air Base, where 12 nations have uh, pooled uh, their resources and uh, joined uh, strengths uh, to operate C-17 uh, strategic airlift uh, capacity, that is strategic airlift aircraft, and we would obviously like uh, to increase uh, this um, endeavor and also to make uh, uh, this project more efficient. As regards Syria, You've heard about uh, the events today, the uh, recent events, and uh, this week, earlier this week, our minister announced that in case Hungary is going to be approached um, in this respect and in this case, then we are going to offer and commit uh, forces, military forces uh, that are capable of detecting and identifying and assessing uh, chemical uh, attacks, use of chemical weapons. That is uh, actually the consequences thereof. Uh, we have a very good uh, appropriate equipment there. Of, uh, therefore, uh, the mobile biological laboratory, uh, which has already been used in international uh, settings, international arena uh, as well. In conclusion, let me also say that I have congratulated uh, the chief of defense of the next conference because, as uh, you already know, it is Lithuania uh, who got the uh, right and the privilege to organize uh, the next uh, military committee meeting. Uh, and of course, it is of utmost importance uh, to have a, a very successful and um, uh, successful conference in uh, uh, Lithuania next year, year as well. Uh, therefore, our Lithuanian colleagues, uh, uh, I think, uh, have uh, gathered experience uh, uh, during the course of the organization of this conference as well. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Anyway, um, any eventual uh, NATO expansion, so uh, uh, like uh, other countries, uh, Georgia, Montenegro, when for countries like these, uh, when would it be possible to join NATO? This is one of the questions, and the other is that uh, as regards Afghanistan, uh, after the drawdown, what is going to be the headcount and uh, what is going to be the split of forces? Next, as far as the economic situation is concerned, the, sec -gen, the Secretary General mentioned earlier that the United States uh, should in the future uh, take less burden uh, while the European uh, uh, members, uh, uh, allies, uh, should uh, take a higher chunk of the burden. Uh, has this been tabled uh, during the course of this conference? Thank you very much. I will allow myself uh, to start uh, as to the first question which was raised as to enlargement of the alliance. This is a political decision which in no way has been discussed by the military committee and is entirely within the prerogative of the council. Uh, as to the size of the force which is going to be uh, uh, the basis of uh, mission resolute support uh, post-2014 in Afghanistan, it is uh, still to be clarified. There is ongoing military staff work. Uh, Commander ISAF expressed his views on how the uh, mission should be articulated and organized, and we will be finalizing uh, military advice uh, when required uh, by addressing this issue when required. Uh, by the Council. Uh, and finally, as to the burden-sharing issues, uh, the uh, transformation dimension of the Alliance reflects, among other things, also the burden-sharing with the purpose of making all our forces more capable and therefore sharing the burden in a more appropriate way along the lines of what you mentioned as to what the Secretary-General has been saying. Thank you. Next question, please. And uh, I have uh, two questions. One is uh, on today's agreement reached between the United States and Russia regarding Syrian uh, chemical weapons, whether you have any statement on that. And the second question is about Turkey. You said NATO is monitoring the situation closely. And uh, uh, has Turkey asked for any additional support from NATO apart from the, or in addition to the Patriot missiles already deployed? And is, are there any discussions on the way to extend the mandate of these missiles? So 
to keep them longer there than the original target date. Concerning the first issue of the agreement reached uh, between the United States, by the United States and Russia on the control of the chemical weapons uh, belonging to Syria, uh, we can only applaud at the meeting and the negotiations which have been ongoing. Uh, the uh, announcement was given, to, uh, during, was given during the meeting, and we have taken due note of what has been said, uh, but we have uh, no views as yet uh, as to what uh, this, uh, the consequences uh, of it. Um, so that's where we stand for this uh, for the time being. As to uh, the uh, reinforcement of Turkey, uh, we have not uh, discussed the uh, potential extension of uh, the uh, Patriot batteries in, in Turkey, uh, but this will be addressed in due time uh, in a close coordination with Turkey and, uh, and the contributing nations, uh, and uh, should in itself not be any problem. Thank you. Right. Any further questions? Okay. If uh, that is uh, not the case, then I will say yes. Pablo Grandi from the Socialist Press. I just want to, uh, Christo's first part of the question was about whether Turkey had requested any additional support from NATO apart from the Patriot, Patriot missiles. Could you confirm or say anything about that? Thank you. It was, it was indeed raised during the, the second part of the question. And the answer is no. Okay, if there's uh, no further questions, uh, I will say thank you very much for coming. As I said, I will stay behind and uh, provide you with additional information if you need it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.